All right, so here is my watercolor setup. I've already prepared my palette, meaning I've sprayed all of my watercolors down. And today I'm using a six by nine watercolor block. So again, the watercolor blocks, the paper is glued down on all four sides typically. And please remember that at no point are any of the materials that I'm using required. You don't have to use the same paper or same size that I'm using. Use whatever you have, use whatever you like. Same with paints, brushes, everything. And while I am going to be showing you and telling you exactly what it is that I'm doing, what I really want you to get out of this is the freedom to just explore your paints and figure out what kind of looks you can get with your brushes and just with your intuition. Also over here, I've got another camera that hopefully I can get some good close-up shots of what it is that I'm doing. Now, I have no idea. I have no starting point. I'm just gonna kind of follow my intuition and do whatever comes out of it, just like the videos that I was doing on my 60 and 30 challenge. So I'm going to start with my, this is my fine misting spray bottle. I'm just going to spray a section of my paper here, just wherever. Again, it's always important to make sure that I know you probably can't see the glare of the wet uh, paper very much in the video, but whatever you're doing, wherever you're sitting, make sure that you can see it. You want to be able to see where it is that your paper is wet and how wet. Remember, we have the, the orange peel and the domed. Those are the main uh, wet surfaces that we're looking for on our paper. And if you need more information on that, if you missed my Watercolor 101 video, you can get it in the information I card up in this area somewhere. I'm using my number 10 round. And what color is calling my name today? I think today, I think I want, I want to go a little bit, I'm going to do a Jane style watercolor painting today. So nice, you know, grays and browns and that's what I like. So I just got some Payne's gray. Typically what I do is I'll get my brush wet and go into my paint, then lay it down a little, maybe get a drip of water and thin it down a bit. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm just touching. This paint's gray doesn't, it doesn't bloom as well as some of the other colors. So I do have to kind of nudge it around a bit more, but notice in the small camera over here, notice how I'm not like brushing and sweeping back and forth like we do a lot in acrylic. I'm really just using the tip of my brush. I might push a little harder and kind of swipe to the side, but back up to the tip and just let it kind of do its thing. Let's get some more paint. And work that in there a little bit more. Maybe we'll do some flicking. love to splatter paint. Pull that out a little bit. And I'm pretty much just keeping my brush marks onto the wet paper. That's why I'm getting that soft look. If I come out to the dry paper, remember I'm going to get a harder brush stroke that doesn't change. So see like that. And it looks quite different than everything else. I just cleaned off my brush. It's just got some water in it. And I'm going to do that bloom where I come below the paint, touch it with the tip of my wet brush and pull it out to the side. My paint is all pretty thin there. Let's just add a bit in there. want to see, I think, a hint of some brown in there. I'm going to get, this is Hematite by Daniel Smith. It's actually ground up Hematite stone. 
see it's just got a bit of a different color and you can tell it blooms better than the Payne's gray because I just dropped it down and it started to go its own direction. So if you are playing with your watercolor and you can't get a color to bloom, before you decide that it's just you and that you don't know what you're doing, please test out a bunch of colors on the exact same spot of paper because it's probably just that color. It's really crazy how colors are so different. The way they act. Clean, wet brush. And I'm just going to soften that. Pull that bloom out a little. Let's... A little bit more water right up here at the top. I just want to make the top of this a little bit taller. Some more Payne's Gray. Yeah, it's a, that water was a bit domed there. That's why that paint just kind of again <laughs> those little hard edge slugs, paint slugs that just kind of drift. I'm gonna use my palette knife. Just dunked it in my water. It's just ever so slightly damp on the back. I'm just touching the flat part to the paper to kind of nudge the paint around. I'm gonna get it right to the edges. But sometimes brush strokes are strange. And sometimes you get a little bit of a more unique look with the palette knife. You see there how I'm just touching, I'm not, there's no scraping. Clean, wet brush. I'm gonna come at it from this angle, flat, just outside of that paint, and nudge into it. I just wanted to soften that shape a little. Same down here. Okay, let's get a long liner. I'm just gonna wet it down, kind of tap off some of the water run it through here. See how it starts to make some tree trunks, just a little bit of water on the brush and it helps resist some of that paint. Let's do that again. We'll make some branches coming off of there. Press it nice and flat and wiggle it back and forth. There we go. Can even come back, dry that brush off on the paper towel and then come back over it and that really will lift some of that paint off. But I'm not trying to lift it down to the white of the paper. If I really try to do that, I'm gonna overwork the paper. It's gonna start to shred. Just making sure I know where those trees are that I'm creating. So again, like I was saying, all I'm looking for here is to give myself an idea of where tree trunks and branches might be don't need everything to be solid white and you know perfectly readable just giving myself that idea a little bit of a wetter brush there and can you see the way that the water starts to bloom the paint because all of this paint is still wet my paper is still very wet can you see here how shiny that is what I like to do is start on wet paper like this and then just kind of see what happens as it dries, you know. Eventually it'll get to the point where I go to put down a mark and part of the paper's wet and part of it's dry and so that mark is really unpredictable and it'll blur out or it will be crisp in some areas. And that's what I really like. 
I don't want to have this perfect, you know, rock solid control over everything that I'm doing because I just think it looks more stiff that way. All I'm doing here is just running a damp brush over this. And so it looks like I'm making lighter grasses or branches or whatever. It's just a little bit of water on a little liner brush. Pull some of them outside of these shapes and it picks up a hint of that paint and gives me just a ghost of a branch. So right here, a little bit of water. Let me see if I can get a branch to come up. Just a very faint one. It will just be kind of a ghostly little thing once it's all dry. I'm gonna keep going with that. I love, love, love to do this. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go to a little bit of a bigger brush. I think this is my number two doesn't matter just a small round and I'm gonna get some more Payne's gray a little bit of a heavier mixture this is a little bit thicker paint and a lot of this is starting to dry so I'm gonna go flat can you see how my brush is flat and I'm gonna kind of start sketching in some texture maybe these will end up being rocks maybe I'll come back with a wet brush and blur them out who knows, right now, just playing around and seeing what happens. So I'm mostly using my brush flat. See that flat? And then I might come up to the tippy toe just to sketch in some detail or soften the line a little bit. Take that right to the tree. We'll do a little bit of negative painting. I know I told you about negative painting before kind of showed you briefly what it was, but I love to use negative painting. Just picked up a hint of water to soften some of those lines and get that paint to go a little farther. So that's just water, but there's still a little paint on my brush. Let's come in with a little bit of that color right here between these trees. So it looks like this rock formation over here is going behind the trees. Let's keep up with that. I'm gonna get some more hematite. It's a very soft color. It's not very dark or very opaque. And let's do some of that negative painting. So I'm gonna paint up along the edge of this tree say where it is I kind of like I've got a little bit of a line there and there now I've got two little kind of distant distant trees I can even just avoid that spot there and say there's another one whatever you like clean that off damp brush flat and I'm just touching into that so that that line fades don't spend a lot of time Actually, I'm going to blur that out. Don't spend a lot of time trying to like scrub paint to get rid of lines. You're just going to damage the paper and lift up other paint. Just get to it right away. Damp brush and I'm just going to soften that line. There. Let's see, now it looks like we've got these little distant trees back there. I'm going to pull a bit of this shadow the side there to differentiate this front tree from this one behind it not too bad let's keep going with that a little bit in here have a little tangle of trees going on over here Don't let it sit too long before you come back to it to soften it. I just laid that down real quick. Damp brush to break up some of those harder lines. And if you get to it before it dries completely, which you have a few minutes, then it very easily softens 
and spreads with very, very little work. Let's keep going. I think I've decided I want to get rid of that one. So I'm just going to paint over it. There we go. So I know, you know, a lot of people are afraid of watercolor because they think it's unforgiving and it's hard to cover mistakes. But I think if you are open to mistakes happening and open to accepting the way that they change a painting or, you know, dictating the, the direction your painting goes, mistakes are not something to be feared in watercolor at all. I'm completely open to them because, you know, I don't, I come into this with no idea anyway. A little bit damp brush and I'm going to wipe away some of that darker paint there. I just kind of got it wet, dry off my brush. I run over it with my brush flat. So, yeah, just change your relationship with mistakes. If you insist on having full control over everything that happens on your paper, especially when you don't know how to have that full control, then you are going to struggle. You know, I don't pretend to know everything about watercolor. I'm not a watercolor expert by any means. I hope I didn't give you that impression that I think that I am because I'm not. So I'm completely open to the unexpected. I'm completely open to, you know, things happening the way they happen. That's why I come to watercolor without a solid plan because I just find it's easier to come at it with no plan than to get frustrated and upset when my plan doesn't work out. Little Payne's gray. I typically only come with uh, maybe a color idea. Sometimes there's just a color that I want to see, a color that I'm interested in using. Just doing a little bit more um, negative painting here. And you're the boss when it comes to where branches are. Don't, don't try to you know, look at it and think, oh, where is that branch? I don't know where that branch is. Make it up. And if a branch ultimately doesn't make sense to you, if you look at it and you're like, I have no idea even what's happening with that one, then paint it out. Damp brush, just running over that line. Just ever so slightly. Same thing up here. Reshape that branch got a little weird. There we go. And let's just kind of take a hint of darker right here to say there's some foliage maybe that's kind of in the front. Wet brush. Just adding some water so that paint kind of moves around on its own. Maybe some water and just kind of flick it. There we go. I like that. Drop into there and let the water take the paint where it's, where it's going to. Here's what I really love about watercolor that you just can't get from acrylic and oil or anything. Do you see how this color is fractured? I've got bits of blue and you just get so much color variation because as some of the colors dry, they fracture into multiple colors. And especially if they're made up of, you know, several different pigments, like Payne's Gray is typically made of, I think this is probably ivory, an ultramarine, ivory black and ultramarine is my guess. And so as it dries, it separates and you can see the ultramarine and you can see some of the ivory. Let's get a little bit of a larger brush. I don't know, this is my five or six or something. A lot of this is getting, uh, it's that drying 
Remember on our Watercolor 101 video, I showed you we have drying, where it looks dry, it's not shiny, but I can tell that's still wet because the paper is still a little wrinkly. So that's our drying. So I do need to be careful. If I add a little bit of water, I could resist the paint, or if I uh, brush over it too much. So I'm just gonna nudge a bit of water on there with my brush flat. Just some water, being very gentle so I don't lift up a bunch of paint. And I think I really like how some of that blue is coming out. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of ultramarine and I'm gonna lay it down right here next to my Payne's Gray. Maybe I'll get some Payne's Gray and put it in there too. Just so I have one area where maybe there's a little bit more blue. And that's bursting a little bit better than the Payne's Gray does on its own. Clean brush, a little bit of water, that's too much water. Just separate that. Not too bad. Let's, what do I wanna do over here? I think I'll come back to this. Let's do our ground for now. Actually, I'm just gonna lift a hint of that out of there dry clean brush just wipe at it just a little bit kind of pull some of that paint off uh, yeah let's get some brown in the ground but I want to be very subtle about it so I'm gonna get this hematite burnt scarlet just mix up some colors if you don't have these it's just a very soft uh, kind of transparent brown it's also made with hematite like this. Maybe I'll just pull a bit of that in there. This is pretty dry. So I'm gonna come in here just kind of with the half foot pressure on my brush and just kind of scratch some of that in. Flat and just pull a bit over here. Clean, damp brush. And I'm gonna soften some lines. Now that this is wet, I can drop a little bit more of this paint in there. You get some areas that are a little bit darker. And let that paint move on its own a bit. And a little extra water. Let's do a little bit of splattering here. Just a little bit. Damp brush and just pull some of those. What I actually was picturing, I'm gonna go to my number eight bright. Oh, it's got some purple paint in it still. There we go. Let's go to my number eight bright. I'm gonna get some more of that hematite burnt scarlet. This brush gives me a super fine mist. So that's kind of what I want in here at the ground. There we go. Perfect. And I picked this color because, I don't know if you can see there at the bottom, it's starting to uh, kind of fracture and break apart and I'm getting a little bit of uh, texture. It, to me, it looks a little bit like a natural dirt type texture and got some dark bits in there, some redder bits, some grayer bits, and it's just all what this paint does as it dries. I'm just gonna very lightly kind of sketch out some little horizontal bits for the ground there. Maybe just a hint over here. As you can tell, I like to leave a lot of white space in my, in my landscapes. I don't, I don't know, with, with watercolor, I don't feel that there's a real, 
necessary reason to cover all of the paper. I mean, you certainly can. It's just, it's just a, a personal choice, but I don't care for it. This is a clean, damp brush. I'm going to start kind of wiping away some in here, see if I can get some lighter bits. Remember that if you get to the paint while it's in the drying phase, so it's still wet, but it's not shiny, or at least it's not very shiny anymore, you can wipe paint away with just a damp brush. So let me show you again how I'm doing that. Clean, this brush is clean. I'm gonna dry it on my paper towel. I'm gonna come in here with just the tip of my brush, see on my little camera here, and just lightly rub back and forth. It moves some of that paint and it removes some. If it, not enough of it's coming up, but I can tell that it's still wet, I can take a little bit of extra water. This brush is a little bit wet. And I'm just gonna lightly touch just the very tip of the brush into a few of these places. Let it sit there for a minute. Maybe here on some of these rocky areas too. Just depositing a little bit of clean water. I'm gonna wipe that on my paper towel and then come back with the tip of my brush and look at that. Just lightly touching where I deposited that water and it removes some of the paint off of these rocks. I've got some little highlighted faces. Keep that paper towel handy to wipe your brush off after every brush stroke that you use to remove paint. Okay. Let's go to back to the long liner. I'm going to get just my hematite color. If you don't have the hematite and you just want a soft gray, just I find I get the best grays from mixing blues and browns. So experiment with the blues and browns you have and see what gives you a, a nice neutralized gray. And then just add a little extra water so it's very thin. But I'm gonna make a few trees and grasses here that are just a little more substantial than some of those kind of ghostly ones that I scratched in. Not too many, I'm not gonna get carried away with it. Little sketching back and forth here. Almost like you're scribbling with a pencil. It's just the tip of the brush. See that on my little camera here? And we'll just add a few over here as well. Oh, found a little puddle of water on this side and so that branch kind of spread a bit and that's okay. Just get a few that kind of come out here to that edge. See how transparent that is. Super, super transparent. We can even throw just a little bit of Payne's Gray in there to darken up some branches a little bit more. But I want all of these to be pretty soft. Get a few little grasses right here. That was just Payne's Gray. Maybe a little bit right here on this little bit that's poking out. And then I've got where I can see where it connects and I think it looks weird. Just a clean damp brush and just soften that. I am pretty happy with how this painting's turning out. Let's get a few of those little scratchy grasses over here. See, just kind of scribbling with the tip of the brush. Maybe even some I like to flick. I know some people don't like flicking. <laughs> the spray, the messiness kind of freaks some people out. I think it hides a lot. So I feel like 
if you really feel like you're struggling to make things look, I don't know, the way you want, hide it with some splatters. <laughs> I'm gonna put a few more up here in the tree. I just think they look really, really, I don't know, they add a little bit of whimsy and they're just fun. Maybe a few little branches coming out of there. If I don't, it doesn't matter because every time I pick up the brush, I'm learning how to use the paint more. But the only time that I don't learn how to use the paint is if I don't use it, if I don't allow myself the time to play and figure out what happens, you know, then I'm, then I'm not learning. And paper, this is... This is really in, inexpensive paper. So if it's, if the painting's screwed up, I can just rip it off, do another one. I'm not worried about wasting paper. Let's move on to our gouache, which means it's detail time. That means I'm about done. So this is just my, I think it's my number two round, little water, my gouache is right here. Can you see that? Yep. Typically, I just use my gouache right off the, the little pile here. I don't usually make up a little mixing spot of it once in a while. A little extra water. And I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush. And I'm not going to fill in the entire tree. That's going to make things look really strange. All I'm going to do is say, you know, I bet that if this tree were in this setting, I would have a highlight maybe right here. And I'm gonna run this color, just kind of sketch that. You see my camera here? It's just the very tip of this brush touching the paper. And I'd like to make sure that this branch shows off, that you can see that branch. Maybe here. I feel like you have a little extra working time with gouache than you do with regular watercolor. So sometimes I will go through and add my gouache right about wherever I want to see it not worry about what the brush marks look like just yet just get the, the gouache on and then when I think okay those are probably all the places I'd like to see it then I'll wash my brush and come back and just soften up any hard lines that I don't like Somebody is going to ask if you can use white acrylic paint instead of gouache. And honestly, I don't know how it would look different. I've never done that. So if you are wondering if you can use white acrylic paint instead of gouache, please try it. Just try it and then let me know. Tell me, hey, I used acrylic paint instead of white gouache and this is what happened and this is how it looked. I would really like to hear about that. And let's see, I'm gonna add some here. Change the shape of this tree. I think it's kind of weird right there. So I'm gonna widen that out a bit. But I like how it's a little softer on, these, on this inside because that part's a little more buried in the tree. So I'm not really gonna touch that. Just let it be softer and kind of buried. Scumbling a little bit of gouache into that dry paper. Damp, clean brush, soften a line. Another thing we can do is I'm gonna come into my Payne's Gray here with water and see I'm just pulling a tiny bit in. See how transparent and thin that is. I'm just gonna take a little bit of it and run it along some areas where I feel like it would be a little more in shadow. Just kind of touching and letting it 
letting it do its thing. A lot of this tree is wet because I've already added the gouache. So really I'm just nudging the gray in and then letting it soften when it hits water or letting it be a little more crisp. Ooh, I like that. Let's darken that up a little bit more. Just kind of touching where it's wet there, see? And letting the paint do its own thing. Nice and dark right here underneath that branch. Maybe some darker areas up in here. Just a damp brush. Not too bad, this one needs quite a bit, I think. So my thin Payne's Gray, just run it down that side. little hint of a scumble with the tip of my brush to create some texture. Clean it, dab it on a paper towel just to get off it. a little bit of water. I don't want it to be too terribly wet. And then I'm just softening that line with very small touches. If it's too dark, I can get a little more gouache and just go over it. Again, if you know if the dark pulled out too far. So my gouache here is a little strange, but it was dry. Notice I just took a damp brush. That gouache really does re-wet quite easy. I can even just come back in with my dark and That'll bleed onto the tree a little bit, and that's okay. Finally, whoops, let's get some highlights on the rocks on the ground, so just some gouache. I'm just gonna touch right about where I might want it on these rocks. Remember, Rocks are more than a top edge. So what I mean is don't take your gouache and go there, that's a rock because then it's just gonna look like a white line. That doesn't look like a highlight on a rock. So I'm just gonna damp brush and kind of pull that out. But see these are gonna look a little bit more like rocks and the gouache is gonna dry much more transparent and softer than that. It looks so stark white when you put it down. At least the brand I have. I don't know about all other gouaches. It might just be the brand that I have. So it's worth experimenting with, with whatever you have to see what happens. I'm just softening some of those lines, nudging some of that thinner gouache into a couple of areas. just punch a couple of highlights on our trees. It's pretty thick gouache, so it's m mostly gouache, not a lot of water. And it's applying pretty uh, dry. I'm getting a little bit of texture, which is fine because this is a tree and I am holding my breath a little bit and trying to talk. So I'm just gonna wipe some of that bright white into a couple of places. I feel like I'm just about done here. Let's do one last thing and then we'll decide. I'm going back to my long liner and I'm gonna get some gouache on it. I am gonna lay it down here just so I can make sure I don't have too much. Just wiping off a little bit of that. And I'm gonna come in and just add some little some little highlighty branches with the gouache. If we have dark branches, we're gonna have some light branches too. 
Don't worry if they're too light. Just put them on there and decide once they're dry. I do like to flick with a little bit of gouache too. Mostly, like I try to keep my gouache flicks to the area where I think this, the light might be coming from. So in this one, kind of flicking it in this corner, I feel like I would like to see the light kind of coming from this area. I'm not worried about light source or anything like that, so. Good. I'm just going to spend a couple more minutes messing around with branches and all kinds of colors of my grays. And then I really feel like I'm about done. I really like this painting. Just maybe adding some little shadows to the rocks as well. Just using my long liner because it applies very small amounts. And that's what I like right now. Just small amounts of paint. Even down here where it's a little dry, I can come in with the tip of my liner and just kind of scribble a little bit and get a little bit of texture in the ground. A little bit of a rocky, kind of pebbly texture. All right, I'm pretty sure I'm done, except for one last thing. My uh, number eight bright, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Nice dark Payne's Gray. And just a very light flick down here in the ground. Let it get onto those rocks too. I just feel like that gives a little bit of a that little sandy speckly texture is nice for the ground. You might not even be able to see that. It's so fine. Just these little micro sprays. And I feel like I'm done. So I'm gonna sign it.